Hi everyone, Mrs. Basega here, and today we're going to be working on graphing and trend lines, but especially using Physics Aviary Quick Graph. Today we're going to learn when to use different types of graphs. We're going to learn to make XY scatter plots in Quick Graph 5.0, as well as how to add trend lines onto those. Finally, once you do have a graph, I want to make sure you know how to take it from a graph to an equation. So let's get started. First off, a pie chart. Pie charts should only be used when data represents a portion of a whole. So this is a cool pie chart. It represents the total number of background radiation a person experiences in a year. Each one of those little parts makes up the whole exposure. You get about half of your exposure from just living on the earth near the ground. Because the ground naturally has radon, that radon naturally goes into your lungs where it alpha decays and can damage them. Only a tiny, tiny amount comes from artificial sources, and within those, most of those are medical. A small portion of that includes both nuclear power and weapons testing. It's a pie chart within a pie chart. How cool. A bar chart is different. In this particular competitive eating records chart, this represents what's called a discrete data set. Guys, there's nothing between um, there's nothing between French fries and pork. There's no like French fries 0.5. You can't have a a fractional thing that's between asparagus and pork ribs. What we mean by discrete is that they stand alone. Finally, the one you're most likely going to use in physics. In physics, because we're a science, we want to find the relationship between two variables. We're generally going to do XY scatter plots. These represent continuous data sets. And the difference between continuous and discrete is that if I have a discrete data set, I can't have a fraction here. But for instance, I could have a fraction of a dollar, or in this case, it's fractions of thousands of dollars. Yeah, Mexico can spend $1,500 per student expenditure. And to me, this chart kind of does make sense because it shows that expenditure per student increases as the GDP per capita increases. And to me, that makes sense because if your country has more money, you spend more of that money at school. So let's talk about Quick Graph. Quick Graph is not a program or an app that you're going to be downloading to your iPad. In fact, feel free to go to Chrome or whatever it is you're using as a browser and type in the physics aviary, and you're going to go to Quick Graph 5. You can type everything in here or just search Quick Graph 5 and it will come up as the first choice. One of the reasons we like Quick Graph 5 is because you can put in your titles under X and Y, your independent and dependent variables, and you can do many data sets at a time. So I'm going to go enter a data set. So let's say you did an experiment. You have a cart and then you're loading masses on top of it. You start with a low mass and you slowly increase the mass kilogram by kilogram by kilogram. Your independent variable is mass in kilograms. Notice it's got those headings that we talked about the other day. And you sit there with an accelerometer and measure the acceleration while keeping a constant force. Right? One of the things I like about Quick Graph is that it lets you enter data and it plots that data live. So if you mess up, okay, because that occurs, so let's say you mess up and you accidentally enter 40. You'll really quickly be able to see that you misplotted that point. It doesn't fit in with the rest of your data. Now that I have most of my data entered from our experiment, I'm in data set one. I'm going to hit curve fit. Ooh, a proportional fit doesn't fit. A linear fit doesn't fit well. Notice that this correlation here is 0.87. That means it's not a really good fit. The better your fit is, the closer this number will be to 1. And here's the problem. If I pick inverse, inverse square, inverse square root or exponential, all of those, they kind of look the same. So I'm going to give you a hint here. Until the end of the year, it will not be exponential. We want to make sure you've seen it in math first. So for now, it's not exponential. Don't even try, guys. So between inverse, inverse square root, 
and inverse squared. We're going to try those. And I see it is a really good fit for an inverse. I can tell it's a really good fit because it doesn't even put the correlation. It doesn't seem to fit the inverse square very well at all. Notice that while the first point is kind of there, the rest are not. An inverse square root <laughs> doesn't fit any of those points. So let's go back to inverse. The inverse shows an equation of y equals 20 over x. We're going to write this a little differently though. Once I've plotted the trend line and I've got the best fitting trend line, I can change its equation from xy form into a more meaningful form for physics. That is, I see the variable on my y-axis is acceleration, whose symbol is a. So I'm going to replace the y with an a. The 20 isn't a variable, it stays the same. But any x I would replace with the letter m because m is the independent variable. So what we found in this experiment, after we graphed our data, is an equation that can be written to describe this graph is a equals 20 over m. Let's do another example. To recap, when we go to Quick Graph 5, we go to Physics Aviary, go to Quick Graph, then we're going to put in our headers. In this case, I put in speed, its symbol v, and its unit. I put in kinetic energy, Ke, that's its symbol, and joules, that's its unit. I would take my speed and enter each value. In this case, speed changes the amount of kinetic energy you have. Evidently, the more speed an object has, the more energy it has. That kind of makes sense. And when we graph, I get a plot that automatically labels the x and y axes, if I want to change the axes for any reason, you can go to set axis, right? And that will help. But in this case, I do want to see all my data sets, so there we go. I'm going to hit curve fit, and this graph curves up. So I'm really choosing between squared and cubed. Squared, ooh, look at all that data set fits. The points are all on the line, but cubed, only some of the points are near the line. The square is the better fit. In this case, y equals 5x squared. But let's say I did another trial. This one has a mass of 10 kilograms, and it had this particular relationship between speed and kinetic energy. What if I just repeated my experiment with a more massive object? I would go to hit change data set. Notice it is still speed and kinetic energy. It still has to plot the same things. And let's say I had a much heavier object and I get this data set. Notice that as I enter data, it automatically plots in a different color and it automatically readjusts the axis. Okay, so I can see up to five data sets at a time. They'll all plot in different colors, but red was my low mass object, blue was my high mass object, and if I went back into blue, I could give it a curve fit as well, and we could compare their equations. After plotting the data, our graphs show y equals 5x squared and y equals 11x squared. So taking the y-axis to be kinetic energy, and the x-axis to be speed, whose symbol is v, we end up with our two equations that represent our two data sets. So before you head out and practice this on your own, let's recap. Today you should have learned when to use a pie chart, a bar chart, versus an xy scatter plot. You should have learned how to make xy scatter plots in Quick Graph 5.0 how to add trend lines to those graphs by hitting the curve fit feature. And once you hit the curve fit feature, how to take that equation and translate that into the physics variables. Excellent. So with that, we're going to go practice and I'll see you next time. Bye.